They form a visible ring around the president. The best way of looking at the protection of the president is a, is a series of layers. They are a highly trained guardian force, schooled in history, motivated by tragedy, and wary of each and every potential threat. This is high stress work, and its dedicated operatives have all signed on to the risk of personal danger. But their work must remain unnoticeable to the public. Their layers of protection must remain invisible, like their name, the Secret Service. They are armed with an arsenal of protection unseen by the public. Their tools include specially designed weapons, blinding lasers, bulletproof fabrics, and transparent armor, all ready within a heartbeat. Uh, this was gonna be deadly force. All shrouded in secrecy, all part of the job of protecting the leader of the nation from any harm. He must be protected at all costs. How do they do it? These are the secrets of the Secret Service. November 22nd, 1963. President John F. Kennedy and his wife Jackie arrived in Dallas, Texas. It was a day that would shake the nation and forever change the most elite federal law enforcement agency, the Secret Service, the agency that would fail to protect him. The Secret Service does many things, safeguard our currency, protect important U.S. officials and foreign visitors. But its most crucial task revolves around a single purpose and a single person. They have to take the utmost precaution all the time to protect the President of the United States, who's more important than the individual, actually. He's a representative of the country, the representative of the Constitution, the commander-in-chief of our, of our armed forces. He must be protected at all costs. Since the Kennedy assassination, the world has only become a more dangerous and complicated place. Threats now are not just a lone gunman, but sophisticated terrorists who operate globally. There is no room for mistakes. If you are successful for every day for four years that he's the president, and on the one day something happens, you lose. The agency lost that day in Dallas. And in hindsight, the reasons are all too clear. Arriving at the airport, John F. Kennedy was unexpectedly greeted by warm, friendly crowds. But behind the joy was a terrible piling up of mistakes. Number one, over the Secret Service's objections, Kennedy insisted on riding in an open convertible, where he was vulnerable. Mistake number two, the motorcade route passed right through Dealey Plaza, where the president was a wide open target. Number three, in response to political staff, agents who usually surround the limousine were pulled away so people could see the president better. One reacted by throwing up his hands in disgust. Three times he protested what would prove to be a fatal error. Kennedy was killed by the third shot from a sniper rifle. Well after agents, if they had been nearby, could have pulled him out of harm's way. Bottom line is that they lost the president. And uh, the agents that were there and, took, and, and, and were responsible at the time have taken that very personally. Kennedy's death shook the Secret Service. That was a tragedy for, for everyone. But like in any tragedy, uh, lessons were learned. The changes were fundamental and sweeping, and they began in the most obvious place. The car. Presidential limousines started off as carriages pulled by horses, later replaced by cars, and they were usually open. The people wanted to see their president. But Kennedy's assassination prompted a complete redesign of the presidential limo and isolated presidents in a silent, sealed-off cocoon, where the outside crowd is only heard through speakers. They are basically taking a tank and making it look like a car. The latest limousine, known as the Beast, has a foam-sealed fuel tank that won't explode even with a direct hit. The car is perfectly sealed against biochemical attacks. There is an oxygen supply and firefighting system in the trunk, and reportedly, bottles of the president's blood type. The doors weigh as much as a 757 cabin door, thanks to eight inch thick armor plating. Remington shotguns are close at hand. The body is made from steel, aluminum, titanium, and a ceramic. 
accessories include bumper-mounted night vision camera and tear gas cannons. Run-flat tires keep rolling even when fully punctured. Called transparent armor, the bulletproof windows are one of the most amazing aspects of the presidential limousine. Of course, the Secret Service refuses to say anything about them. But in Ogden, Utah, International Armoring Corporation harnesses the same technology used in the Beast to custom armor cars like this luxury SUV for billionaires, Hollywood stars, and heads of state. To demonstrate how the ballistic glass works, owner Mark Burton shoots the same transparent armor that is in the SUV at 20 feet, five times the magnum. And this glass is less than half as thick as that in the presidential limousine. The windows begin with layers of heavy glass that absorb the bullet's impact, but generate deadly sharp fragments. The final layers are a plastic, like a catcher's mitt engulfing a baseball. These elastic sheets stop the bullet completely and any shards of glass. Some of the rounds that are actually embedded into the ballistic glass itself. But as you can see from the back, the polycarbonate has stopped not only the rounds, but also the fragments of glass. But would the glass have protected John F. Kennedy? Burton fires a high-powered rifle from 30 feet, much closer than the assassin was to the president. As you can see, the energy has been dispersed, but yet on the back side, it is very, very smooth. No penetration. As threats of kidnapping and assassination of prominent or wealthy citizens increase, there has been an international boom in protected vehicles. First, they are stripped down to their basics, all the wires exposed. Steel armor is added, then lighter armor axe, 10 times the strength of ballistic steel, pound for pound. Nylon explosive resistant cloth is put along the floor to baffle the impact of explosions from below. Metal overlaps seal off the door openings. What we want to do is make sure there's no angle shots that get in around your doors. IAC clients have reportedly survived over 250 attacks. It takes between three and five seconds for a trained individual to react. It takes the average individual about 10 seconds. And so what these vehicles are designed to do is to provide a safe zone while their mind is configuring, while their mind is figuring out that I'm being attacked. I need to get out of here. So, if you happen to be pursued by bad guys, IAC also has James Bond devices to protect you. Like these lethal tacks, which are designed to stop a vehicle on your tail. An $850 add-on. The Beast probably doesn't carry tacks to drop out the back. It doesn't need them. The President is surrounded by armed protection. To be in the motorcade is just a sense of, of wonderment and it's a rush. Right in front of me is this car, the back up, and some ninja warrior looking people with very big guns. The presidential limousine is part of a motorcade of 25 to 30 vehicles. One is a mobile communications center, linking the agents on secure lines. The rest of the motorcade is two armored limousines, each identical copy of the other. One's a decoy, just in case, God forbid, somebody fires, and it's a 50-50 chance that they know which one to fire at. And then you've got all kinds of motorcycles, police cars, secret service cars, armored cars. Uh, press vehicles, communications vehicles. They move a city and they move it rather rapidly. The president is secure as long as he remains within the belly of the beast. But as soon as he steps out to mingle with the public, the Secret Service goes into overdrive. The presidential limousine has been transformed into an impenetrable cocoon. But outside the armor-plated car, dangers are everywhere.